is the Mindset Athlete Podcast, and I'm your host, James Roberts. I'm a two-time Paralympian and owner of James Robert Fitness, which is an online training, nutrition, and mindset coaching business. First of all, I'd like to thank Lauren Williams for suggesting this quote to the show. An athlete is a mindset. It's how you prepare, think, and execute. Not because of some elite status or physical stature. Anybody can be an athlete by Chris Hart. And each week on the Mindset Athlete, we like to bring you inspirational athletes, a message or experts talking about human optimization to teach you how to change your perception of your mindset and become 1% better. You're listening to this either side of Christmas. I hope you had a, a wonderful Christmas as what is that? however that looks wherever you are in the world um be it if you're in lockdown or not i hope these tips will give you some uplift uh, so i'll go straight into it in terms of how can you alleviate procrastination with this two minute rule and before i go into it i'll explain a little bit more because ultimately you know what's the difference between a good and bad day ultimately comes down to moments and decisions so be it you make a good choice that and, and it turns out to be a bad one ultimately good 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 ultimately you have a good day uh so what i'm getting at from that is is perspective is looking at the positives where there may not be any so if I use the current state of affairs in the UK, because that's where I'm living, uh, it pretty much, uh, everybody's world flips upside down within a space of less than 24 hours of so going from what was normality to now being in where I'm in Wales, tier four, I'm pretty much locked down and you can't do anything. So kind of going from having some sort of quote-unquote normal Christmas in a couple of days to for some for me this is where I'm going to shine a positive light on it my Christmas will be no different from pretty much the last four or five years that I've got to have close family around me anyway uh, because of my living situation so my Christmas is no different from 2019, 2018, 2017. But obviously, for the majority, it's a massive shock to the system because being told that you can spend time with your immediate family and, and, and obviously larger extent, the family that might you not, might not see for large periods of, of the year, to being kind of told, no, you can't do that, um, is a little bit hard and a bit of a pill to swallow. So be it so if I don't go on a tangent and another bit of a rant, I'll go into the positives now of of how can you imply, not imply, sorry, apply the two-minute rule. So normally when it comes to goals, we start big. You know, new resolutions of stopping smoking, going on the next diet, losing a certain amount of weight. Okay, the list is endless. And and I could spend uh, a large portion of time just talking about that. But obviously, this is where I want to think you to take baby steps and think smaller. Because obviously, the inevitable of doing something big, this is when bad choices obviously arise. It's like, well, I can't quite do it anymore so i'll give up so the 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 big one of that within my industry the fitness industry is weight loss or people going to the gym come the first few days of january and then within a space of three weeks give up because it becomes too difficult um and ultimately that's probably a too big of habit change that they've created thus they can't be able to continue either because of not having the support not having the support network uh not having an industry that doesn't help um i would agree with that especially but where the two minute rule will apply 
is when you start a new habit, it should take less than two minutes to do. You'll find that nearly any habit that can be scaled down into two, a two-minute version. So I'll give you a few examples. Read a, read before bed each night becomes read one page. Do 30 minutes of yoga becomes take out my yoga mat. Study for class becomes open my notes. Fold the laundry becomes fold one pair of socks. Run three miles becomes tie my running shoes. And the, what I'm getting at is because you do that over and over and over again. And this ties into the Facebook Live I did about habit stacking. If we use the three mile run, you tying your shoes every single t- time that you go out for a run becomes a habit. It becomes a automatic response as I like to do this. Or I get the opportunity to do this, but going into another video I did as well, uh, especially the podcast I did last week. You get the opportunity to be able to do something that you might not already have the opportunity to do. Thus, from a psychological perspective, the dopamine hit, the body's happy because it gets the reward. So be it action, cue, response, reward. So you do that over and over again. The cue is ultimately doing the two-minute rule. You do it enough, you get a response. The brain likes what you're doing, thus it wants to repeat it over and over again. As opposed to doing a bigger one as I must, come back to what I was talking about last week, I must go for a three mile run. I must do 30 minutes of yoga. I must read a chapter of a book. I know I didn't say that, but you get where I'm coming from. I'm, I must. So there's a negative association towards the task. Thus, I don't want to do it. I make a different choice. I didn't say bad. Make a different choice. Thus, I ultimately enact different act, activity, actions. I make a different choice. So it's like a fork in a road. I choose to go left. My intention was to go right. But if you scale it down to baby steps, and this is where pretty much what I talked about last week with athletes, glossing over, and I won't generalize because it's it's something that I did, you forget about those baby steps of, you know, day in, day out, hours upon hours, repetition after repetition. Ultimately, we wanted to do it in the first place, so it's it's not it's not a good intention, it's the only intention. Thus I need to do it. But if you simplify the act to putting on your shoes or tying your laces, you've been doing that since you were a child, so for the majority, I know there's some people that don't. I was one. Uh, I, I had uh, Velcro shoes for a long time uh, growing up because of my disability, but I do tie shoes now. Thus, it becomes a little bit easier to get a satisfaction out of what you want to do. So you smart, sm- you start small, and then you start adding things on little, little by little, little. But this is obviously... We like to start big, and I'll use the quote of go big or go home, is ultimately not probably the right choice when you want to create different habits, because you haven't got the recall, and I'll throw a title of, you know, the film, Total Recall, you haven't got a positive association to that memory to be able to attach upon, so be it... If I talked about, you know, tying your shoelaces, for me, that was a moment of step for me growing up from going from Velcro shoes because it was easier to be able to put it on my, on my prosthetic leg. Thus, it's a little bit quicker. Whereas over time, I got over that, that hurdle to be able to do it. And I don't think twice about it now as an adult. So it's it's rewarding yourself 
for a job well done, however small it may be. So if it's reading a page a day out of a book, and I'll, that's where I'm going to tie this in with a book, this is a, a great, well-known self-development person, Eric Thomas, the hip-hop preacher. Most people have probably seen his YouTube videos, his podcasts or whatever, of he talking about, you know, there's no point spraying, getting an Uzi out and spraying and making more mess than just to be able to shoot the place up, as opposed to if you were the sniper, and the the the, the, echo, it, the echoes the exact same thing that James Clear was, it was pointed out in his book, it's small, it's precise, and it executes it to, the sniper sits there as however long it needs to be to take one shot to execute, to, to get the job done. Thus, it's a small step to get a, uh, an overall mega bang for your buck, the, the ultimate outcome or, or result that you wanted. So that's it for today. Um, because Facebook is, oh, let's come back. This is what I gotta live with. But in terms of, you gotta start trying to think small to take little steps and not think like we are as a society of quick fixes, magic pills, Amazon Prime, you know, kind of mindset that it, it, you click something and it comes straight away. Life doesn't work like that. It didn't in the past. It's something that I think needs to change now in, 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 in the present and into the future. Because ultimately, if you want something bad enough, you have to work for it. It doesn't just fall into your lap. But if it needs to be something that you want and you've never done it before, either learn from somebody else and ultimately you can bypass the the baby steps because you can pretty much absorb from somebody else, be like a sponge, or depending on time or money, you do it the slow way. And, you know, the, the child anecdote of the tortoise versus the hare, well, the tortoise won. So if you've not done it before, that's not a bad thing to do it, to do it the slow way or the right, the, the correct way for you. So that's all I've got to say on that matter. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas if you're watching this on the live. If you're watching this on the replay, don't forget to put hashtag replay and ultimately tell me what day you, you watched it. Obviously, if you're watching on the, the listening on the podcast, do get in touch and let me know if this, these series of individual solo episodes were thought provoking for you and were something a little bit different than me interviewing a guest and me going backwards and forwards. If this is something that you want me to continue. Obviously, get in touch. Uh, I'll read the comments and then I'm going to sign off. Stay positive and most importantly, stay safe. For me, it'd be one step at a time. But I think in terms of that's, I echo what Dora Milam has said because I think that's been lost art in society. It's not people willing to do the hard yards. It's I want to have it now. So I'll echo what I said and I'll sign off is either employ a coach, it don't have to be me, to be able to get the results that you want so you can be a sponge and, and I'm not saying leech off them, but absorb all the knowledge that they have, thus you're not having to go around the merry-go-round every single year of, you know, loop the loop, keep going back to where I started over and over again, or... You do it like James Clear says. You you do it one step at a time. You start baby steps. You do one page. I take out the yoga mat. I put on my running shoes. That Whatever first step that you need to do to start your goal, do that over and over again. 
If you liked this episode, please do share it with your friends and do let me know what you thought of the episode by tagging me over on Instagram at James O Roberts Eleven. And again, I'll spell that out for you. That's J A M E S, the letter O R O B E R T S, and the number eleven. And again, you can do the same on Twitter and Facebook. And in addition, if you had any follow-up questions, don't hesitate to shoot them over as well. And finally, and last but not least, don't forget to check out my free content at fitamputee.co.uk and click on the tab resources. But not forgetting, I have also started a new Facebook group, especially for the podcast, which you can find by typing in The Mindset Athlete. All the links will be in the description. You can find all the show notes at mindsetgame.lipson.com under the category general. So once again, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Mindset Athlete Podcast.